Hey guys! Thanks for, for joining me today. Yeah, so like today, again, it's just a, a, just a little bit of a, you know, extension of what we did the other day. Um, I can show the fixes that I made like after the stream ended because I literally like <laughs> 10 minutes after the stream ended I was like, oh, I got everything working. So I can show how that happened. Um, but this is also going to be like making the artwork for the Aether like a little bit more uh, thematic towards uh, towards our game uh, rather than just being these like generic purple orbs that that you know they look very much like Paragon and you know we want it to look like our thing so I'm just gonna very very quickly mock up some some artwork for that um, and uh, maybe dabble with some particle effects to, to go with it maybe because um, I'm not really that good at particle effects but you know I can I'm sure I can figure it out. Um, you know, can't be rocket science, right? And then um, I'm also going to be fixing some stuff on uh, on Aurelia because um, Reinhold, one of our programmers, he uh, he managed to fix up the the issues we were having with the rig and the skeleton uh, this morning. Um, he's just pushed the update to that, so like. Uh, so now I can go ahead and start uh, and, and fix the cloth so that we have cloth physics again, like dynamic cloth physics, and um, yeah, so that should be should be cool. Um, you know, the animations are still very much placeholder and everything because we kind of decided, well, whilst you know, whilst we're working on making sure the rig works, we're just going to use these placeholder rubbishy things. Um, but you know, now that it's now that it's working and all in place, um, some some people that are you know better at animations than I am are going to be um, importing them and uh, and getting everything set up. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to show off some like really cool animations for Aurelia. But the animations you'll see today are still going to be you know a bit sucky. Um, so yeah, I guess um, I guess let's let's get cracking. Uh, just to answer some stuff in the in the chat. Uh, yes, zing. Key. It is a grid. Uh, Adamo, woe indeed. Uh, Markokins, Magnus, basic attack shot, man. You are not ready for that. Like, you just you can't you can't deal with it. Um, Santos, this is in fact Proto Grux. Um, <laughs> Uncle Booth, man, always naked all the time. No need to congregate. Just wherever I am, that's where the naked people are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don Rhesus, uh hello, hello, thank you for the, the cool term again. I, I remember what it means. Um so yeah, let's uh I guess let's get let's get started. Um Hello So yes, this is a bot. Uh, it's a world origin. Awesome. Uh, oh, let's of do... Right, so I need to make sure it's the correct scale. So, I think the spheres in UE4 are like... Well, I think everything is like a meter by a meter by a meter. Whatever. Or in the case of a sphere, it'll be like... Pi times one meter, probably. Uh, <laughs> um, and obviously, like, we don't want the Aether things to be, like, a meter, right? Because that's friggin' huge. So, let's go with 20 centimeters. I think 20 centimeters is, like, a, a good size for good size for that kind of junk, right? Also, I'm the only person in chat, so you guys can feel free to ask me whatever you want. And until someone comes in and like stops me, I'm just gonna answer with, you know, whatever the fuck I want, really. <laughs> I'm here. Almighty, can you hear me?
so this box is basically our scale reference. What what we want is for um, is for like all of our aether to be like no no taller, wider, or whatever than this. Um, really, maybe maybe a slight adjustment to that, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Hi, my carnies. Oh hey, Lint's here. Hey, Lint. I have been here for about five minutes. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? Oh, that's great. That's odd. <laughs> You're not muted. No, I'm... voice meter is acting yeah. up. How's that? Can everyone uh, else in the stream here? Here, Lint. I think so. I guess my cone is can hear me as... <laughs> he said... Hi. Maybe. Ah, don't play the catch lock. Nope, I straight up cannot hear <laughs> Lint. Have you muted Discord? Weird. Okay, I'll try restarting Discord then. Oh, okay. just let me check my voice setting. <laughs> you could. Just write everything in caps. Nah, don't. <laughs> Seriously. Well, this is weird. I can't hear Lint, so... <laughs> Hello? I guess you still can't hear me. Yeah, something is definitely broke. Definitely broke. No idea. Well, that's lame. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's right. No, Discord. Discord isn't muted. Um, and like, I can, I can, I can see, I can see David talking, and I can see, um, like, even in in voice meter, it's showing that there's like there's audio coming from him. It's just not reaching my headphones for some reason. Typical. Hey, Deep. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I can't hear a deep field either. I can't hear <laughs> nothing. I can't hear no. He can't hear any um, Discord. Yeah. Everyone can hear Discord yeah, that's, fart that's from fun, Almighty. Fun for me. <laughs> so this is going to be a very interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> At the minute, though, I don't even know he was. <laughs> I don't even know he was streaming a few minutes ago, and I was just sending him DMs. So, <laughs> <laughs> like an ass. <laughs> I just hope those guys are being nice. <laughs> huh? Is your Discord muted? Yeah. <clears throat> no, he's already checked. It's it's going through and he can see us talking, but he can't actually it's not going to his headphones.
This is weird. This is really weird. <coughs> Oh, I can hear them now. Still no need to respond now. Can you hear oh. me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You there? <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> I, I can hear you, but I can't. I wasn't respond. But I, but, I can't, but, I can't, but I can't hear my music, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is total BS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's either picking one or the other, but not letting you mix the two together. Yeah, something th something's weird there. Like it was working perfectly before, but now now it's not. Not, not working. Welcome to IT. Yeah, I blame blame IT. <laughs> so what did I change there? Change that. <laughs> Just try. I'm just gonna try again. And see. If this... <laughs> yep. I think I broke it again. <laughs> huh. Yeah, definitely broke it again. I just suck. What'll be it? But I just gotta know one thing. Are you ready? One day, one day, we're gonna have a stream that just goes like incredibly smoothly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing will go wrong. It'll just be, it'll just be great. <laughs> <laughs> Today apparently is not that day. <laughs> Where is everybody? Don't know. Omega uh, Omega does, uh, has some stuff to deal with. Um, yeah. Oh well. Wait, I get to I get to stream with no music today. Well, no music for me. Everyone else gets music. I don't get music. So lucky, no. lucky me. Uh, unless I can. Maybe good thing for you. Unless, hang on. Uh, there must be a way of doing this. Come on, Spotify. You've got, you've got like settings and stuff that I can, I can deal with, right? Like, no. Devices. No. no. Where's the like? Where's the, where's the output? Like, where's the sound output, Spotify? Are you running Twitch through OBS, or are you just yeah? So streaming? so I've got I've got Twitch Twitch runs through OBS, but I have a couple of different audio outputs, um, and it runs through Voice Meter, so that I can have like the the rubbish music that we need to play, so that we can have the videos on YouTube that goes through the, through to the stream, and then I have my own music that I listen to because I want to listen to that music. <laughs> <laughs> Not the elevator music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently, apparently it's all broke. Apparently, it's it, like literally just today it's decided it doesn't want to work. Right. Well, stream cancel. Eh, yeah. <laughs> no. Everyone, everyone go home. Go home. Everyone go home. <laughs> it's all like nobody. Yeah. Everyone go home. Right. Okay. So um, we have our. I mean, it says it's box, but this is our scale reference. Let's duplicate that shit. Uh, let's see. Let's find a match. Ooh. Ooh. Boof says if your composer wasn't so shat, he'd write you some tunes. I know, our composer is just the fucking worst, man. Like. <laughs> Absolutely. Just the worst. So I want to just make a couple of fucking crystal shapes. I'll make like three, three basic crystal type shapes. I probably should have made these earlier and just been like a Here, here's one I made earlier type thing. Um, <laughs> Go blue Peter on it. Yeah, yeah. So let's. Uh, I 
I'm sure people remember crystals from a previous stream, right? <laughs> You've done enough of them. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I can't read the chat right now. Is there, have we got any questions or anything going on? Not yet. Everyone just bitching, uh, right? <laughs> not even stream, that. It's stream, quite quiet, actually. Stream sucks! <laughs> <laughs> so disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> I make art for a living. I don't stream for a living. If I if I was gonna if, if I was gonna stream for a living, I'd be I'd be wearing a fucking push up bra or something, being on camera. <laughs> right. Gotta do it right. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Webcam takes up ninety percent of the screen with ZBrush taking up the other ten percent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. fucking uh... <laughs> Are you sculpting a box? Well, if you're sculpting a box, you'd be done already. <laughs> Six sides, four hours. Well, no, we're just going to turn it all back into Minecraft. Just, just, just sort power on. We're just going to do Minecraft. Yep. <laughs> At this point, Notch will probably even be on our side. Most likely. Just, just continue writing the entire thing in Java. Oh yeah, Java. Oh, <laughs> wait, did they really? Wait, that, is, yeah. is Minecraft really a Java game? Yeah, it Minecraft originally, originally yeah. was written in Java using OpenGL. Oh good lord! <laughs> Once Microsoft got a hold of it, they started to rewrite it. Um, well, they haven't. They're, they're doing a. A portal version, but they're not going to get rid of the Java version because the amount of people that have written mods for it is just ridiculous. <laughs> they wipe the Java side of it and just rewrite it in C sharp. Mm -mm. I'm actually one of those included modders, so. <laughs> What's that? Oh, are you really? Well, I used to write mods for Minecraft. That's how I got into this kind of stuff. Hey, um, Deepfield. I... Can we can we like yeah. surprise? Do you, do you, what, what do you think? Should we uh, surprise the the people in stream right now? Can I can I show them the the thing that you've just shown me? Oh, I don't care. I mean, it's totally obviously not done, but I mean, sure. Cool. Go for it. It'll so, uh... original on there. Everyone ready? Hashtag leaks. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag leaks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, Deepfield. Deepfield has just updated me on uh, like the texturing progress on uh, wooden. So yeah. Hashtag leaks. And that's Ooh. and that's all you get. So yeah. Gone. Gone. Done. Done. It's over. No more. <laughs> Oh, that is looking good. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to a new, um, a new profile picture for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, I've seen I've seen some people with like uh, with pictures of like the the jungle boss and stuff as their wallpapers, and I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's like yeah, but I'm like it's not even finished. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still so good. It is cool though. And then there was like someone on someone on Reddit did like fan art of Aurelia, and that was like no one's ever done fan art of my work before, so, or, or that I know of anyway. I, I'm sure some of my work in the past has been Rule Thirty Four. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was just like, oh, that's neat. That's super neat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Booth approves. He says, "Hell yes." <laughs> yeah, Booth. Booth loves wording, man. Like, <laughs> uh, got a fan in Booth. 
I mean, I can't imagine a, a better fan to have, really. But it's fucking incredible. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that any day. I'm just looking forward to seeing them in the game and being able to run around with them. Oh, seriously. Okay, so we've got three cool. super basic, uh, super basic shapes. Let me see if I can up the rest a little bit on. Uh, no, I think you're. Ma aren't you making a the gems that are used for the aether? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to. I just wanted to kind of replace the. Um, so at the moment, like in, in the last stream, I made like the way that aether actually works, in terms of like dropping to the floor, bouncing a bit, and then you know rushing towards the player. Um, now I want to make it so that the aether. Um, looks a little bit better than it does and looks a little bit less generic than just, you know, glowing purple balls. <laughs> um, and then at some point in the evening as well, I will be uh, fixing up Aurelia's cloth so that she has working, like, dynamic cloth physics again. Because uh, that, yeah. that all got broke. That all got broke. The from the sound of it, what uh, Quick just said, is that the animations are still walked up the hill. The, the rigging's now set properly, but yeah. um, because they're using some of the ones they f we found, uh, her hand goes straight through the um, her body, basically, when she walks. Neat. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> again, like I mentioned at the, at the start of the stream, like, all of the animations that you'll see for Aurelia tonight are literally just the really, really quick, dirty placeholder animations that we have for like I think whilst, we we're, them, whilst we're yeah we, we basically just like bought like a a little animation pack um just to use for testing purposes so like um because we knew that the rig would be like in and out of progress and like working and then broken and stuff like that like there's a lot of a lot of like iteration to be done um there's no point in us like basically just like building all of our animations on a broken rig so we've got like animations being worked on that can be transferred to this rig um but the but we we still needed like something quick and dirty to use like while we uh while we tested i guess also when you're doing something like the rigging it's quite useful to have a already perfected animation to test it on instead of having a work in progress rig and a work in progress animation and it just makes i guess it just makes it harder yeah 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 So, let's do a quick, dirty... Oh, someone's already got screenshots of it. <laughs> no, why am I not surprised? <laughs> uh, already in the char uh, character art development channel. <laughs> well, like, I mean... The, the... I won't be surprised if they're going on to um, Trello very soon. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, ultimately, like, we wouldn't show this stuff if we didn't expect that shit to happen, you know? Like, yeah. you, you can't really keep stuff a secret, you know, on the internet. No. And to be honest, this is not what we're trying to do anyway. Once we have something that we want to show off, then we're going to want to show off it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I guess you're doing a quick retop. Yeah, yeah, super quick. Um, I could... Uh... Oh, I'll, let me let me just check. Uh. 
renaming, display wireframe, and where's my pro, pro optimizer thingy? So let's make the vertex count like a hundred. Is that uh, one hundred is probably even too much to find out. <laughs> if Silver, the... you did an absolute great job with the rig. Yeah, Silver, so so man, you, you're, you're taking you're, so long. Yeah, you're kicking ass, man. And and honestly, like the entire like dev process we have is like we'd rather it take a little bit more time and we get it right than just use something quick and is all wrong you know like otherwise we would have used the paragon assets <laughs> <laughs> to bring that one up <laughs> num thin oh crap totally did i did the wrong thing i did a i did a bad <laughs> did a bad did a bad did a bad uh, so this, we actually want to be... I don't think you can convert from, uh, from an instant to a flow, uh, to a, a copy. Sucks. So, just gonna have to redo that bit. That's okay. So what basically happened there was, um, in Max, when you clone an object, you can either have it as a direct copy, like a, which is basically a snapshot of that moment in time or you can have it as an instance which means that any changes you make to either one of the copies will affect the other one or you can have it as a reference which is where uh, it takes a snapshot of that moment in time and then you can add things on top of that to one of them will which will affect the other one um, and I basically just just cloned it wrong so. I have to recalculate but this should hopefully speed up the the retop, especially because this is mostly placeholder art anyway. Let's have a look at what's in the chat. Uh, can we confirm or deny whether or not the Aether will be picked up from the ground? Um. So I think this is still being discussed uh, internally. The, the 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 stuff that I've worked on with Aether at the moment is basically just the mechanic of having it come to you. It would be really easy to make it so that some of it just stayed on the floor as well. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. In fact, I can probably do that in this stream as well. Um, if I remember rightly, uh, in in Paragon during Legacy, like what would happen is. When a minion was killed, half of the half of the uh, amber would go onto the ground and stay onto the uh, and stay on the ground until it was picked up, and the other half would go to whoever got the last hit. I think that's the way that it worked. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be like doing that same thing again, or if we're just going to have like whoever kills the thing gets all of the stuff. Um, you know, like, we, I, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Like, mechanics haven't discussed that with me yet. Nice, Gap. You need him. You alright? Hey, boy. That's thanks. Yeah, I mean, just working on stuff, crystals and shit. <laughs> that's it. it. Looks like a white ball of something. Yeah. It, that's just, it was just incredibly dense in terms of polygons. Uh, okay, this looks like the most. What is it? Uh, so it's going to be one of the chunks of Aether. Um, ah, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm going to do like two different chunks, or three different chunks even, um, three different shapes or whatever, and then when the Aether is spawned, it will just like randomly pick one of those shapes. Yeah. 
Tiffany. Faith is definitely a thing that is happening now. Is it? I don't know. I'm, I'm behind on that one, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aether is apparently the, the, the thing that is definitely happening. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> uh, Santos, uh, again, like, I can't, I can't give a solid answer as to, like, whether anything will be left on the floor. That's up to mechanics to decide. Um, my personal preference would be for it to just, like, whoever gets the last hit gets everything. Um, but, again, that's not up Well, to you me. normally divide by nearby teammates as well, don't you? Um, yeah, but, this, but fuck them, to be honest. As well, isn't it? Yeah. I got the kill, I get the bonus. So what if this is a team game? <laughs> oh bloody hell. A little tired. Yeah, just I'm dying, I it's just been busy. Yeah. Couple of edges round, where it's all like pretty and shit. <laughs> you gotta make sure it's all pretty and shit, man. It's kind of your job, isn't it? Bitches don't like ugly crystals. But yes. Is my job. I am art man and I make art. <laughs> There's so much that can be optimized on this that I don't even care. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll do it another day. Uh, okay, so let's sure this is one moving group. Okay, the normal the fuck let's normal. It looks like it should just be a three-dimensional vector. There we go. That's UV that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, UV. Grab some great edges. Get along though. Makes sense. I should be looking a bit more interesting than just the uh, white balls, anyway, at least. They were purple, man. They were purple, eh? Yeah, purple balls. And a bit of randomization on the uh, rotation as well as they come towards you. Quite yep. interesting. Yep, I can do that. That's easy. Easy, easy. Alright, so if I break like that, I should be able to just relax the shit out of it and get it done. Nope, they broke. <laughs> of course. That's better. That's better. That's better. And we can check to make sure there's little or no overlapping stuff. That one, go there. Joe would kill me if he saw this. <laughs> <laughs> like really, because he's the prop artist, I should be I should have gone to him and yeah. been like, make me some crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, yo, make, make me some crystals. Want, want crystals. Um, yeah. So he's had nothing to do yet, now you're taking his only bit of work. Uh, well, he's writing up a whole bunch of documentation at the moment, and <laughs> he is also like, he's just messaged me about some, some stuff that's happened um, at home that is, it kind of sucks. So I'm going to. You know, yeah. not not put any more pressure on him than he than he needs right now. Sounds like he needs a distraction, like crystal building. Yeah, man. 
He can then take his mind off that sword. <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you how over stream. But what I will say is, during our uh, during our final major project, um, he he managed to get hold of the uh, the crystals from the movie The Dark Crystal for us to use as reference when we were making crystals. Okay. Fair play. It That's was cool. it was awesome. Like just this little box of crystal. crystals, and I was like. Oh, it's sick! <laughs> <laughs> I literally just holding a piece of my childhood, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I kind of grew up with those kind of crystals and stuff as well, because my parents are jewelers, so... I just have like, all sorts of weird, precious things laying around. Yeah, that crystal's an amazing movie. Let me kill the chat. <laughs> I'm just half for the minute, so... I'm um, Anne. <laughs> um, I, I like my purple balls. It's all good. Wait, I've died. I just happened to notice that you guys were streaming and I had nothing better to do for a bit, so I thought, right, well, come in here. Yeah. Okay. Basically how, every, how, how all these streams oh. work. <laughs> People get bored and they go, oh, someone's streaming, let's go watch that. We'll go and take take part in that. I just finished, just finished watching Blank Panther, so. Blank Panther? Black Panther. <laughs> Blank Panther, yeah. Bla <laughs> Blank Panther. <laughs> now there's a movie I'd watch. <laughs> yep. Uh, these crystals remind me of the ones from Crash. They do actually. Rash? That low like poly crystal. Bandicoot, you mean? Yeah. Yep. I do like Crash Bandicoot? I was never a ma I was never a massive Crash Bandicoot fan. It's all right. I'm I'm really excited for the Spyro remake that's coming. Yeah, that just look good. I mean, partly because like I know the artist that worked on it, and it just looks phenomenal. But <laughs> <laughs> I was always more of a Banjo Kazooie fan. Yeah, banjo. I like I like most of those platformers, you know, from, from back in the day. I always preferred Sonic to Mario, though. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Just the momentum in the game, like I always liked the momentum, and then like so. My favorite Mario was Super Mario World, like the first Super Mario World with Yoshi and. Oh and god, that. yeah. Absolutely fantastic game, like really, really good game. But I always found myself playing it like a like a Sonic game, like just get to the other side as quick as possible. Don't worry about like unlocking stuff or anything. Like as soon as I got the as soon as I got the cape and I could fly, I just like skip the entire level and fly <laughs> to the right hand side, you know. <laughs> Basically, like a speed run, base. Pretty much. Do you remember? Do you remember attacking the mutant camels? Attack of the mutant camels. No. No. Oh, Terry's big adventure. I do remember that one. Terry's was brilliant. There's some really good platformers. They're all around about the same time, you know, even as early as Mario and Sonic, and uh, very underappreciated ones. But uh, yeah, they're good. But yeah, the attacking mutant camels had camels that smoked cigarettes to regain health and shit. It was weird. <laughs> really cool. uh, it's games from the nineties, boys. <laughs> Uh, the question here, I've noticed a lot of your other Discord channels, uh, a lot of your other chat channels in Discord outside of the character development and master mechanics aren't as active. Is there anything you can share on the next SOTG from these departments that can help stimulate discussion? Well, no one really cares about tech, so... I care about that tech. Channels are other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you can ask us in almost any other damn channel in every other server we've got, so... <laughs> <laughs> we answer a lot of the, the, the people bring up in tech. It's just yeah, I, I try and keep in the on. conversation. 
Yeah, I keep an eye on the channel really as much as I can, but it's just sometimes it's dead. You get some really good discussions though. We go into a lot of detail as well. But people have to sort of trigger it off and ask some questions just in the first place. I mean, what do you start with? Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of like, I don't know, spoiling the next state of the game, like that's that's not going to happen. Um, we are currently, well, to be honest, we... we're currently like looking into how we want to present the state of the games in future anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, this six week thing is just really, really hard to keep up with. Um, you know, especially as you, you get into it, you, things aren't quite ready in that following that week run up, and it, it needs to be a lot more fluid and just being able to be like a week late or something. So we're, gonna, we're gonna probably going to address that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like basically, the 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 state of the games stopped being a measure of where we're at and what we're doing, and it started being like a a target that we. Uh, that we aim to hit, and that actually had a negative effect on not just performance, but also like motivation, um, and uh, and like morale. Uh, yeah, morale, gen general, general, general well-being. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna change that. Um, no, just something outside the character development. Wasn't trying to spoil. Um, well, we do have the tech. Um, I think we didn't get one done this this time, and that there was a reason because of the fact that we had a really major uh, problem with the repository, which caused us to lose a week's worth of work. So, well, we might still address that all anyway, because yeah, we've got depends, but we might, yeah. might just do something sort of in the middle or where, when we and feel like we're honest, ready to do so. So we'll yeah, we've got we've got a whole load like. of it's it, the the thing is we didn't really do a tech this time was because there wasn't really much there we we have been doing a lot of work it's just a lot of it looks like it's going backwards for instance all of the animations have been broken we've got a chat system that i've had to kind of bring back a bit at the minute because it's kind of crashing when uh, the entire engine when people are trying to work on it um we've got a launcher but we've had to we've had, we've run into a problem where the uh, file system and the downloading was being broken so we're having to basically redesign that again so there's a lot of things that we have been working on but we just can't show and, and to be honest I've done well there's been a lot of work done on the back end we've completely rewritten the back end into a brand new framework um, but you're never going to see that because all you're going to see is a URL in the front of it so a different language as well. <laughs> oh no, I did, it's not written in a different language. I just had to move it from being written in a um, in a web app to being written into oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, service framework. So sorry, I thought yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I thought you were talking about .NET Core. No, cool. Oh no, that's where the website comes in. <laughs> yeah, but that that's another thing that's going to be addressed soon. Where's it gone? There's some work on XP economy and item shops as well, but again, it's not finished yet. The problem is with things that aren't finished, you can't really show them off. Yeah. Especially not in many programming side, because uh, something that's on half basically just doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, and also the fact that the map is going to be reverting as well, so... It's, it's, it's starting to look actually worse than when we started it, but actually we're doing it for a reason, so... Yeah. As for law mechanics, things like that, it's up to their departments, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't really do much about that. Yeah, they haven't got... got... You've yeah. got tech and art on stream, so we can't really answer for them too much. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't like to, to speak for other people's departments, just in case we get it wrong. <laughs> it's not just that. We're Yeah, we're not... <laughs> it's not our department. It's not what we're doing here. Yeah, so. we, don't, we don't know the intricacies of every single piece of detail. Not until it becomes sort of final or agreed or all sorts of things. Oh, Freya's yeah. up on Reddit though, apparently. So that's quite cool. Oh, really? Neat. Yeah. There's a 360 and a close up. Neat. She's looking really good as well. Looking really good. Yeah. I can't wait to see it textured. I can't wait to see well, how te 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 texturing, it textured. Texturing has already started. Um, so like the the, oh, the cool. stuff that's been shown is actually a little bit old. <laughs> oh yeah, it nearly always is. So not that much. 
I'm just looking forward to seeing what they all look like in the engine because currently all we've got is just Aurelia, which is great, but you can only run around the world so many times with Aurelia before it gets bored. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get the animations fixed for the rigging side, otherwise we're going to end up make, putting errors into the rigging, which is just going to delay things further on down the road, though. So yeah. we're not far off now, I don't think, though. No, I think, it sounds like yeah, Re it, Reinhardt, it Reinhardt just pushed a, a fix that should hopefully have fixed everything, so... Uh, Reinhold. like uh, Reinhold, sorry, Reinhardt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reinhardt's Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so a little bit later in the stream, I'm actually going to be doing um, Aurelia's cloth uh, cloth simulation stuff. Because um, that's. I'm not saying we can. Neat. I'm not saying we can make um, the cloth. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, collide with the rest of the rig, so it doesn't like clip so much. Um. It depends on what you mean by making sure the cloth doesn't collide, because at the moment, like some of the placeholder sure animations, it does collide, rather. oh sorry, make sure, yeah, sorry, um, making sure it doesn't clip. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say. Um, because at the moment, most of the clipping is actually caused by um, like the bits of the cloth that aren't being simulated, and they're just like it's just the way they're attached to the joints, and then those joints are basically like moving through other uh, like problem areas. Um, so that's actually an animation thing rather than a simulation thing. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, because cool. because yeah. not not yeah. all of the cloth is being simulated. Only like the flappy parts are. Um, solid. Why bother making state of the game in the first place if you can just make the repository publicly readable? Well, yeah. Um, just, like, yeah, right. Items <laughs> and do all sorts of things with them. Yeah, it's not Have happening. Fun. Well, that's why he's got the capper there, but okay. <laughs> I know, I know. But, you know. Um, as for seeing the wheels turning, well, to be honest, well, YT is showing a little bit more than of everything anyway, so you're, you're getting a bit of a sneaky peek into stuff when he's going through the, uh, for instance, when he did the um, Aether stuff yesterday. Oh, no, not yesterday. Saturday. So you get to see a little bit more than what did I miss something? Or you should be. I, know. I know, I was having a look through the uh, hero class. I didn't really have a look I, through I it. Like, I very quickly went, oh, look at all that pretty stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah. To be honest, a lot of it's in C sharp, uh, C++ plus plus anyway, so you're yeah. only seeing the basics, uh, blueprints anyway. Oh, though, we've got sound, though. So I think that's all broken again. <laughs> Poor Oak, you put all that sound in and then <laughs> Quicks has just gone and basically broken every single part of it. Because it was all linked in with the um, animation triggers. Oh well. No. Actually that reminds me, WYS is actually breaking the build for Linux. Actually, find out why it's doing it. Aether Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> File name Aether Nuggets. Little nuggets of Aether. And then. Uh, right. No, that is not Blender. <laughs> uh, this is 3DS Max. Yeah. Ooh. It's been a long time since I've worked in 3DS Max. Probably for the best. <laughs> God damn Autodesk. Alright, so let's do... Where's my tool bag? So, tool bag, here we go. I like to bake in tool bag because tool bag is good to bake in. I used to do my normals and that in my like, X normal. Yeah. I was kind of bad at that sort of stuff. I got it to look all right, but not as good as what you can do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Though I did used to use Quixel. I actually used the sweet. Yeah, Quixel sweet is fun. It's quite useful. It, 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 if I, I find it's quite fun to just be able to place all the textures in and be able to see them without having to uh, export them all. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a plugin. It's basically a plugin for um, Photoshop. So hopefully, um, I, can, I can show you what baking actually like is or does now like, in real time. <laughs> so this is this is our low poly aether. If I duplicate this, and, like just move it apart so the each individual nugget, a little nugget of aether. There we go. Um. <clears throat> And then I import the high poly. So this is our this is our low poly aether over here on the left, and we have them like grouped up here in the middle as well. Um, and we have our uh, our high poly aether as well. Um, and we want our high poly aether to. Um, Sorry, we we want our low poly aether to look like this high poly aether, like with all the, like the nice sharp edges and stuff like that. Um, the problem is, like if we look at the wireframes, um, you know the the wireframe for the high poly is ridiculous. It like it can't run in the engine. It's too high, all that kind of stuff. So what we need to do is project, uh, project the details down like the normals and stuff like that. And in particularly, uh, particularly one of the maps that I want to bake down is thickness, um, with two Cs. Uh, <laughs> the the uh, the thickness of the thing. I want to be able to bake that down as well. Um, so I will show you how that works in Toolbag. Toolbag is really really cool about this because it it's mostly real time. So we have a baker. Um, I can grab the the high poly. Actually, need a couple of different bake groups. Three. So, uh, put a high poly one in there, high poly two in there, high poly three in there. Get rid of that. And then our low poly, we can put low poly one in here, low poly two in here, low poly three in here. Get rid of that one. <laughs> And then, in our baker, we can tell it like which maps we want to bake, uh, what resolution we want them baked at, like we only need probably like 1024 is probably even too much for this because, you know, they're very... Yeah, they're, 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 well, <laughs> yeah, four, 4K for something that's only 20 centimeters, god damn. <laughs> uh, we'll do 16 bits of channel and we will have uh, a normal map. We'll have a thickness map. We'll have a. I think probably a convexity map would be good for this. Just like really bring out the edges. Uh, maybe an ambient occlusion just because, but we'll see about that. Half yeah. those maps I'm looking at, I've never heard of before. <laughs> <laughs> I've always ever just used a normal map and a AI. And then I pick our path. So Aether. Take. Then I hit the bake button, which is up here. And watch your CPU just. Tank. No, this is no. This bakes on the GPU. Really? Yeah, this bakes oh on the God. GPU, so it's it's way way quicker than traditional bakers. The hell, I'm gonna have to have a look at that. Oh, it's sick, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the 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 architects over at uh, over at 
marmoset are like actual wizards. Uh, so then in our <laughs> material here, we can we can previs. Uh, I can grab the normal map that we just made. So I don't know if people I don't know if you saw that. I can turn wireframes off to to show it, but our uh, our low polys. They went from being like these these little blobby things that don't really resemble the high polys, but with the normal map, bam, there they go. Looking sweet. Looking super sweet. Um, and then like I can preview uh, I can preview like the thickness map. So the thickness map is really cool because it basically it shows you like it, it, it makes it like well, it, it shows you the thickness of the thing. Um, in in this instance, it's basically saying like the distance between here and wherever on the opposite side is quite far, so it's it's blacker. The distance at the edges here, like if light's shining through the edges, it doesn't have very far to go, so it's it's a little bit lighter. Um, you know, I can also preview uh, the convexity map, which is basically just like a, a super powered up version of thickness, although it's calculated differently. I remember rightly, thickness is something like you invert the normals on the high poly and then bake it as if it's ambient occlusion. And with uh, convexity, it's based on a DDX and DDY comparison on the normal map uh, to to figure out like where there are edges, basically. Um, which means that thickness has to be like it can take quite a while to calculate. Um, but the DDX, DDY calculations are really, really quick, and because that you don't actually have to bake them, once you bake the normal map, you can just generate them, you know, pretty much instantly. Um, especially on the GPU, super quick. Um, and then we've got AO as well. It doesn't seem to have done tick as much. So, probably won't include the AO. So... So this is what our thickness map looks like as an actual texture. Um, got thickness and convexity. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in the green channel here. Blue channel, I will just take. Got it. Hey, super white. Okay, and I'll save that out. That saved to the right. I didn't even look where that was saving. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, cool, cool. Now that's done. I didn't save that. And 3ds Max, I can. Everyone's so quiet, man. <laughs> I'm just watching yeah. what you're doing. Because it's extremely interesting. Um, so I'm going to bring my Aether into here. Uh, it's not a skeletal mesh. Yeah, that's fine. It's normal and tangent. 
what we want. We don't want it to import materials or textures. And, and import all. Yeah, cool. And then in bakes, we have our normal map and our mask. Uh, need to set our mask to be mask no SRGB. Easy. Actually, no, with this, probably is best on default. Then we can adjust our material after. Working on this monitor is painful, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the one that I normally sculpt on, and then I usually have um, I usually have Unreal Engine open on the other monitor because it's a bigger monitor. Oh, okay. This is the basic material. I can adjust this now. Nifty stuff. So if I bring in these. And hit apply, then immediately we should get like a nicer response on the surface of the gem. Then we do this by pixel normal instead of vertex normal because now we've got the normal map in. Makes sense. There we go. There we go. A bit more like faceted in the way it looks. Then we can do something like but again. This is like just super quick, dirty, you know. There we go. Kind of neat looking. There you go, looks like an actual crystal now. Neat! <laughs> I think I might want to ramp up the power of the glow. Yeah, that was pretty good.
randomize the glow intensity on spawn? Um, maybe. They all look slightly different too. So, I mean, for now, this is just like a, it's a cool, like a, a neat little proof of concept. Should look okay. Um, you know, we can, we can iterate and make it better. We have the technology for that. <laughs> but for now, that'll do. And I can go into our Aether blueprint, um, which I commented all out to make it look nice for the, for the programmers for when they eventually go in and you know, wonder what the fuck I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this video. So. Oh yeah. Also, so um, so one thing I did do was I removed. Uh, so like at the end of yesterday's stream, uh, the way that it travelled towards the player was all based on the uh, basically basically using a uh, a homing uh, sorry a projectile movement component. The projectile movement component was chosen because it has like a, a built-in homing function. And I thought, oh yeah, that could work, you know, really well or whatever. The problem was, because it had a projectile movement component, it was moving as if it was a projectile. And that meant whenever it was hitting another Aether, it just stopped working. Because as far as Unreal is concerned, when one projectile hits another projectile, stuff should happen. Uh, you know, like the projectile should, should stop. Um... And, and I didn't want that. So what I did was I wrote my own homing math, which ideally I think we should probably try uh, like convert this over into C++ and then just expose that as a function in Blueprints. Um, but yeah, it, but basically... Use a level. Sorry? Yeah, we can probably just convert that into a, um, into a Blueprint function library. Yeah. So basically what this does is every frame... Um, it gets the lo uh, the rotation of the. Um, Why's my brain not working? It gets the rotation of the aether. It gets the location of the aether, and it gets the location of the root component of the target player. It's important that it gets the root component because if you just get the target player, it will head towards world origin. Uh <laughs> I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> it just goes straight to zero, zero, zero in world space. Um, and then what we do is we find the look at rotation, and we interpolate between the current rotation and the uh, the, the the look at rotation between the two things. So like what rotation it should be if it was facing the character. Um, we, interpolate, we interpolate between those two things uh, at a rate of 100 units per frame. Um, or uh, it would be 100... Alternians? Maybe? <laughs> um, and then uh, we, get the, we get our forward vector. We... Um, we multiply that that vector essentially by like how fast we want the thing to travel. So in this case, it's 25 units per frame, um, and we uh, and then and we add it to the current location, and then we just set the new rotation and location, and that essentially works. Or well, that's basically how you how you make your own little homing math. So if anyone ever wants to make their own homing math, like this is how you do it. Like pause the stream, whatever you know. Copy the nodes, do do your thing, you know. You are a pirate and all that. Um, yeah, so that's that's how that works. Um, but ideally, because it's a lot of math, especially re with uh, like rotations, rotational math is always expensive. But because it's a lot of math and it's running every frame, ideally we want this done in C++ because C++ runs so much quicker than Blueprint when it comes to math-heavy operations. Um, so, now we need, so we have this sphere, but actually what we want is a static mesh component, and we want that to replace the sphere. We actually want to delete the sphere. The sphere is no longer a thing. We instead have this empty static mesh. So here is our collision, and it's not doing anything. We have this empty static mesh. Um, 
and we want to put something in that static mesh. And what we want to do is basically have we, we have the we have those three um, those three different aether chunks. What we want is for whenever an aether spawns, just pick one of these chunks and have it be that chunk. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable to the blueprint, and this is going to be called uh, aether meshes, and we're going to make this a static mesh, uh, a static mesh reference, and it's going to be. So currently it's only referring, referencing one. We want to make it an array. An array means that we can add multiple things. It's, it's like a, a list of things, basically. So we're going to add an array of three static meshes, and we're going to put each one into there like so. What this lets us do is it goes... So, so remember what I said last time about how like these red things are like... Um, they're events that... Tri they, they basically trigger a chain of events in code. Red things can only happen whilst the game is running. In the construction script, you have this. This is basically saying when this thing is being made, so before it's made it into the game, when it's being made and being put into the game, do this chain of, of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our, um, our meshes array. And we are going to get... something from from within it so you can see here at the moment it's set to zero this this integer is set to zero um what we like so what this is going to do is um it will always get this one at the moment no matter what we do it will always get this one um but we can change that by saying we want to pick a random integer in a range and we want the minimum value to be zero because we know that that's the minimum entry into the array and we want the maximum entry to be 2. And the reason why it's 2 and not 3 is because arrays order things in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So we have three things, and although we sit here and go, that's 1, 2, 3, in the array, it's 0, 1, 2. Okay, so 2 is the highest number that we can have there. Um, another you way... Have to watch. Sorry, go on. Some programming languages don't start at 0, they start at 1. Yeah, but this is based on C++, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but 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 a way that you can, um, I mean, typically speaking, if you're writing this kind of stuff, like you will know what your arrays start at, right? Um, yeah. But if you don't know what the array, if you're you don't if you don't know what your array ends at because it's a dynamically collected array, like you you're basically going like get all of this type of thing within the world, and there happens to be like you know two hundred and fifty because power of two numbers uh, <laughs> it, there, there happens to be just you know a random number that you don't know what the number is what you can do is you can go uh, length um, you just do four each you well you can do well no because we're not we're not trying to we're not trying to do something with each thing in the array we're trying to get a random number within that array right or a random entry within oh yeah that array. true yeah? Um, yeah so if we do if, if we pull off from the array here and we go length this will give us the last entry in the array, and we could plug that into our maximum instead. So if we didn't know what the maximum is, we could do this. Um, but because we do know what the maximum Well, I mean, I can leave it like this in case we add more chunks later, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Why not? It's kind, of, it's kind of good practice, and it's quite cheap to do anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to get our static mesh here, and we're going to go set static mesh. This is super, super easy. Go like that. Hit compile, and in our viewport, we now have an aether chunk. And if I hit compile again, it's not going to do it. Why is it not going to do it? It should just. There we go. Oh, it is randomizing. There you go. So now each time one spawns, we get a random thing. Oh, but there is an out of thingy. Uh, so it's getting nothing. So I think actually what it's doing is when it gets the length, it's getting three. So I think yeah, what we need to do minus is minus one. one on that. 
length starts. So at that's one. <laughs> yeah. So that is yeah. <laughs> that's where arrays fucking suck. <laughs> is because when you're counting the entries in array, it goes zero, one, two, three, four. If you had five things, it would go zero, one, two, three, four. But when you get the length of the array, it goes. There's five things in this array. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah so we need to minus one and that should be okay so now we have our random uh thingies i think we want to scale them up a little bit maybe five is too much two four three point five three point five looks good there you go so now we get these random ether chunks neat super neat and if I go back into our Aether Spawner... There you go. Right, it's still going to spawn randomly, which is awesome. So I can just whack that over there in the world and hit play. I wonder where they are. Oh, there they are. Whee! And they're all rushing towards me. Oh, they're huge! I think I may need to scale them back down again. <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> they're all flipping and turning and... There you go. Getting destroyed by these massive chunks oh, of wow. They are big. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I think what we may need to do here is make sure that this isn't colliding with anything. Generate overlap events should off. Uh, no collision on the static meshes that can all die in a fire. Um, that should help with everything like bouncing around. I I hope. Um, and we can set the scale of yeah. I think one is actually smart. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit more reasonably sized, I think. So you imagine like you you're you know, you're across the map and you've just sniped someone, you know, you just get this ding 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 of uh of Aether coming in because you've just done that thing. Super neat. They look a bit dark. You're not going they, to notice them against the dark floor. They do look a little bit dark. Um, should I add lights to them? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you just want to make the game light. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, look, look. My machine is a beast. I don't care about all the plebs out there. <laughs> yeah, mine. Just, yeah. Dynamic light, everything. Dynamic light, everything. Well, you know, they've just given me permission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. Let's increase the. Um... Oh, at least we can then say we need the minimum requirements of at least two Titan. <laughs> just to run again. Yeah, re recommended require. Well, yeah, actually, what what we could do is have it so that dynamic lights only spawn for these things when uh, when you're set to maximum graphics settings. You can say like rec recommended equipment for maximum graphics is you know. <laughs> yeah. Or getting, an, in part is gonna getting, be... getting an interesting <laughs> issue where things aren't destroying properly when they hit Aurelia. So what I probably need to do is like make it so that if they go within a certain distance rather than just overlap, then they get destroyed. Probably a better way to do it. Or you can make it overlap with her container. Uh, is it container? Yeah, spawn volume rather than the um, actual mesh, perhaps. Uh, currently, it's overlapping with the collision capsule. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, so, I mean, the, the capsule yeah. is actually quite big, and we shouldn't really have an issue with that, but for whatever reason, we are. We are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, however, I can, you know, um, I can make it so that that issue goes away. For Fairly easy, I guess. So rather than doing an overlap event, I can do like a. a... Get that. Get the. Uh... What is it we're looking at again? Root component. What we wanted. Root component. Uh, get the length of these two things. 
Nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh, oh, I have to subtract one from the other first, don't I? Uh, minus that, minus that. And get the length. And then I can do like a... If that's less than, you know, five or whatever. Well, probably more than five, probably like 50. Then just destroy the Aether. Um, less than... Yeah, disconnect the overlap events for a second and see if this works. I'm anticipating not. <laughs> oh, it did. It worked first time. Super sweet. There we go. So now it doesn't rely on actually colliding with the player at all. It literally just goes, if we're within a certain distance of the player, just just do the whole collection thing, like destroy yourself and... Uh, yeah. There we go. Hola. Hola. So I'm going to get rid of all of that overlap event stuff because we don't need it. Uh, Omega, is, I don't know, Omega's off doing uh, some, some stuff. Uh, he said uh, he has some things to take care of. There you go. That's all he said. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's fine, man. You do you. Um, so, okay. So we've got that kind of stuff working. Let me see how long do we have. Oh, we've got plenty of time left. I'm going to really quickly look at um, Aurelia's cloth. Let me... Uh, make sure this stuff's in force control first. Source control is important, people. Do it. <laughs> Especially if you've got a pipeline attached to it. That thing has saved us so many times when it comes to broken parts. Like this morning. <laughs> there we go. Someone said, someone said Omega's plotting with Booth. Omega is plotting with Booth. <laughs> Frosty the Snow King. Three months of subscription, man. That's fucking sick. Awesome. Oh, a quick update, by the way, guys. Um, Omega actually made me some, some icons for people that have uh, subscribed for longer than three months. However... Uh, because I'm only an, affili an affiliate and not a partner, um, I don't get to add them until, I think, the end of the month. Like, uh, Twitch haven't enabled the, the ability for me to use them yet. But once they go live, you guys uh, you, you guys that have been subscribing for, for three months or longer will get custom, uh, custom badges for being, you know, sick. <laughs> awesome. Um, so... Oh man, so uh, so here here's my issue with uh, with plastic. You you just saw me check that stuff in, right, in the engine. Yeah. Okay, so now in plastic SCM, I have to re-check it in because it's only in a pending change list. It's not actually fully checked in. Uh, refresh. I I did. I've refreshed. It's in it's in a pending change list. I always use yeah, the uh, I always use the client like the problem, anyway. Right? Never. Use the yeah. internal. Um, right, so. Uh, I've only ever used the that. plugin. That's weird. Yeah, I've only ever used the plugin though for basically checking stuff out. I, I use always plastic use normally. Oh, yeah, no, I yeah, check out in Unreal and then I check in with plastic. Yeah, I've always checked in with plastic. So it also means it will it can determine if there's a um, 
any sort of issue. The only thing, the problem is, if you check in with plastic, sometimes you have to actually make sure the engine's closed because it moans because the file's being used. Hmm, weird. Hey, uh, those things are checked in. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So, master. Yes. So I can now pull them. Uh, I want to make sure that there is no, like, different... Pretty sure it's just using the same skeletal mesh that I used before. But I just should probably go and ask Reinhold. Yeah, fuck it. Um... Oh, that's interesting. Oh no, this... Should be okay. So, here is our Agadus. Uh, Aurelia, guys. What are we making today? We're, we're, just, we're just working on some, some in engine stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah it seems to have missed the map. No, delete. You, you checked everything in, but the map, and then you check the map in afterwards. So it's like it missed the map. Out of uh, the yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually uh, add the map, like the the Aether map, <coughs> because you were talking about like having to delete it on your end and stuff. So I was like, well, you know, I won't do that. Oh no, <laughs> I doesn't really matter. Um, Yours is all right. It's some other uh, people have created test maps, and when I push them through, because they they're half complete, they cause a real pain in the ass errors that I have to dig through to try and. Uh, yeah. Um. Them. Okay. So okay, yeah, uh, that should all be okay. Yes. I don't know. I never really fuck around with all that stuff. So the way cloth physics works is. Um, Um, you have this this physics asset, right? Um, and it it looks like a whole bunch of bubbles, uh, like basically just it, it makes the character look like uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and that's fine. Um, you know that's that's all good and everything. Uh, make sure we're actually working on the right one. So the typically characters will actually have a few a few different versions of these. So like we have this this main physics asset, which is probably going to be used by uh, Reinhold for uh, the foot IK and all of that kind of stuff. This one is going to be used for the cloth sim. And the reason why you have a couple of different ones is, you know, you may not want to simulate physics on every single joint that a character has. I, we certainly don't want to for, for cloth. Cloth is actually quite expensive to simulate. And so we want as few joints as possible to be involved in the simulation. Um, so I actually need to like delete all of these. <laughs> and then rebuild. This is the first step for cloth, by the way. I will explain the second step for the cloth uh, I'm done. So we need to find, let's see, we have our spine head, yep, don't need, don't need to head or neck or anything, uh, upper arms we do need, spine, thigh, okay, so we definitely want a thigh capsule. Yeah, so we've got a capsule for the, the right thigh, big fat capsule. But we can adjust the uh, we can adjust the, the the sizes and stuff for it. It's not a problem. Um, so adjust the radius. Ideally, we want the radius to be a little bit 
a little bit thicker than the the leg, but not a lot thicker than the leg. Um, what's basically going to happen is when the cloth simulates, it's going to wrap around this physics object. So if it's too big, like the cloth will like appear like it's floating away from the leg. If it's too small, you get clipping inside the leg. Um, so we can rotate it into place. Make it just a little bit bigger than we need to, as I said. That should hopefully... Hopefully be good. So we've done, we've done that one. We need to do... The lower leg. Add body there. Physic body. Scale that down a little bit, but increase the length because what we don't want to happen is like have gaps in between the bodies. If you have gaps in between the bodies, that can cause problems as well. So similarly here, the length a little bit. I said food, not food. You're always talking about food. I am quite hungry. Food and coffee tables. That's May's life. <laughs> my coffee table, my current teeny tiny coffee table is covered with candles. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so, so we've got that leg sorted, so now we need to do the left leg. I'm pretty sure there's a way that I can just copy this over to the, the other side. Symmetry! Yeah. Duplicate. Has thicker thighs. <laughs> Can you just make Alton a marshmallow? That's all right. I'll just do this. Um. Hmm. Shaq with the shot is asking if we can make a marshmallow man. Well, I mean, like I'm, I'm open to, to you know, just about any kind of master suggestion, really. Um, to me, it's all about like whether they look cool, you know. Like, don't really care about much else. Uh, so let's get the that there. That. Why is May July? There. Why is May July? Because it's July. Maybe were there mozzarella sticks? You know say. We want all but I think X actually. I oh know, that's fine. That's fine. Literally just copy paste it. Neat. Love being able to copy paste stuff. <laughs> copy paste is copy paste is the best. <laughs> awesome. I wonder if I can copy paste the entire thing. Let's try it. Copy <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh that's the shit right there. <laughs> Yeah, and then finally, I think we need the, like one of the spine, the pelvis. Oh yeah, we could probably do one for the pelvis. We'll put that in the butt. Make that a, like a butt cylinder. A butt cylinder. A butt cylinder. You got a problem with that, May? A, a, a butt cylinder. Yeah, butt cylinder. How does that even? I don't know. So this is I want it to be rotated zero on that one. Zero on that one, and we want it to be a little bit longer. Got, got a cylinder in a butt. Why 
Why does the butt need a cylinder? All butts need a cylinder. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh. Hi, May's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome back, man. We missed you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's for the legs and stuff. I think I need to do another one for the wrist um, because, like, these bits are a little bit flappy. Not, not amazingly flappy, but a little bit flappy. So let's do that. Go with. Uh, where are all the joints? Lower arm L. Probably, actually, we probably do want it on the lower arm rather than add a body. And give it a. Make it thinner, make it longer. Hmm. What's up? What's up, May? I'm trying to decide what to order. I need food. Food. Need food. Chicken roll. Chicken farm for Wait, does this hurt? Yeah, I'm experimenting. Hmm. No, no snapping. Come on, why? Why you do this? Oh, that's why. Okay. Super. Taking off this. Should be okay. Now, if we get the right lower arm, make a body on that one. Copy all the shit from this one. Hopefully, fingers crossed, paste it onto that one. Oh yeah! Right. Dope. That's dope! So we can save that. And then, we can go into the skeletal mesh. And into clothing. It says, no assets available. Boo! Boo! <laughs> we, Someone said... I like to see a phoenix hero. Yeah? A phoenix hero. Neat. Uh, right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Doing. What am I doing? Uh, section selection. Here we go. <laughs> That's what Shikar we want. Said, Shikar said that you've done so much stuff. So much stuff this stream. I know that I'm getting an ex existential crisis tomorrow when I try to find a name for the YouTube upload. <laughs> uh, okay, so create clothing from data selection. Uh, yeah, okay, that's cool. We'll call it Magnus Clothing. We'll remove it from the mesh as well because... Right, so, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but um, the thing that I've got selected right now is literally just the sleeves and just the, like, the, the bottom of the skirt and the, the flappy bit here in the front, like the loincloth thing. Um, and if I zoom right in on the titties, uh, you can <laughs> see <laughs> over here on the sleeve, you can see like this gray thing just kind of poking out like it's, it's clipping. Um, and the same thing, like if I zoom in on the skirt, it's clipping here as well. And in the middle here, like there's this gray thing running up the middle that shouldn't be there. Um, and if I come through to the other side, it's not there because like back faces are disabled on it. This is because this is a physics proxy mesh. What that means is like the the main mesh, um, you know, maybe it's got like 50 or 60 edges coming down here, making it like nice and smooth and everything. But that would actually be really expensive to simulate. So instead, I've made a proxy mesh, which is like a third of the total polygon count, which makes it much, much cheaper to simulate. And it just like offsets the, the, the regular vert positions based on the simulated mesh positions. Um, so that's like a, a nice way to do it. So I'm going to uh, make our clothing here, create that. We want it based on not the Magnus uh, physics asset, 
We want it based on the cloth sim asset. So again, the reason for, for, for having the, the clothing based on the cloth sim physics asset and not on the main physics asset is because we don't want the cloth to simulate against every single joint in the character. If we do that, it will be really, really expensive. And then if you multiply that across like every character that's in the game, every possible thing that could use cloth or whatever, it just, it really starts to add up. So what we want to do is have um, a specific cloth simulation physics asset that is quite light. It only uses the joints that are needed. and We don't worry about anything else. So I'm going to create that. And we have that here like this. So if I go into cloth paint mode, you can see it's become pink. Pink, I believe, means that it has zero weights assigned to it. So, like at the moment, none of it's going to be simulating. I have this this thing here, which lets me paint, uh, you know, whichever weights that I want, which is cool. Um, and what am I going to do? I'm going to. Well, first of all, I'm going to change the brush radius to something actually like sensible. Eight. There you go. That's a bit. Bit more, bit more sane, um, and then I'm going to try to rather than do a brush. First thing I'm going to do is a gradient. So gradient is what we do is we. select the top like we select the verts that are at one end of the gradient and there's definitely some cleanup that's required after this but this is like it, it gets you a good solid base to work from uh, I need the same here And if I hit return, I believe the next step is to Oh, sorry, control. Control lets us select the verts that we want at the bottom of the gradient. So, and there we go. So I've hit return, and so now you can probably see we have like this kind of gradient pattern going, you know, like this. It's quite smooth, quite nice. Um, the sleeves I need to do manually, which kind of sucks, but you know, whatever. So uh, I'll do that now. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. You yeah, whatever. whatever. <laughs> Can we please get range masters that do bonus damage on headshot? Can we please get what now? Ranged masters that do bonus damage on headshots. What do you think this is? An FPS, man? <laughs> totally. Totes. Totes my goat. <laughs> Okay, so that's that bit done. Let's do. Um, so first thing, I'm gonna radius back up to eight. I'm gonna make sure that all of the sleeves, where possible, don't have any simulation at all. Nice and, nice and unsimulated, because really we only want the. We only really want the bottom of the the cloth to be simulated. Like we only we only uh, on the sleeves anyway. We only want the like the the, uh, the wrists to be simulated because if the whole sleeve was simulated, bearing in mind we only have the physics asset coming from the elbow, like the top is just going to like flop down onto the ground or whatever. And nobody <laughs> got time for that. So we the radius a bit. Make it like. You want to attend? I don't know. 
probably need to make a some kind of gradient for that as well. Oh, no. oh my god, he's running to me. Now. Cool. Let's deactivate cloth painting. And <laughs> you zoomed in on them. Again. Oh my god! Titty. What's this game? I'm running to the house! I'm running to the house! <laughs> Hopefully. I save that. Oh, hang on. I need to... This one. Okay, so element number two. Clothing. Here we go. Hey, there we go. And it dangles a little bit. Neato. Neato burrito. Neato burrito? Neato burrito. Neato burrito. Hopefully, I'm hoping that that grey cloth is going to disappear, otherwise I've messed something up. The grey cloth didn't disappear, but we do have cloth simulation, so it's a start. I messed, I messed something up. Oh, did I not hit, like, remove from mesh? I wonder if that's something that I can add now. <gasps> may need to find it in here, actually. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's an invisible asset, an asset that cannot be found. Fun times. Invisible. What do you mean? Sorry, what? You said invisible. Yeah, it's an asset that can't be found. Like it's just not, not anywhere. It doesn't exist. I just like wonder if I can just cheat, give it an invisible material. <laughs> I get super cheeky. And I hide the thing because I did because uh, I made a mistake. Uh, I can like I can fix it later basically. But for now <laughs> for now, screw all of that. There we go. Cloth physics. Both physics, yay! And I wonder what happens if I go and run and fall off the edge. Is the clock gonna go like miles up into the air? Uh, we, yep, yeah, there you go. 
Magnus butt. <laughs> Magnus butt. Magnus butt. What are, those little, what are those little things that are flying to you? Flying uh, that's you? the that's the aether. That's like oh. what what you get for killing stuff. What booty? <laughs> I see the booty. <laughs> that that butt. <laughs> All about that butt. Um, okay, cool. So now we've got that. Let's. Let's look at how we can make the Aether look a bit more nice. You have to pick it up. I mean, not pick it up, but like, you have to be close to it, I guess. Um, no, it just like, it, like so far it just comes to you. Although we, we, you know, we can, we can change that. We can, we can make it do other things. Um. So we want. Wonder if a ribbon particle would look good on this. And remember, I am not a VFX artist, so this is gonna look. <laughs> this is gonna look awful, like truly awful. What will happen to leaving players? Will a bot replace them? Will the master run to spawn like in Paragon? That sounds like a question for Rich and or David. David left us. Oh, David left us. Sounds like a question Rich for Rich. <laughs> uh, we haven't actually got an answer on that one yet. Um, both are possible. But, you know, we haven't actually decided what we're going to do. It really comes down to mechanics. I guess it's a bigger discussion, really. I was going to say it's mechanics, but I guess it's more than just mechanics. We need to talk about it. It's a little bit more complicated than just saying, yeah, we can, yeah, we're going to do it, I think, isn't it? Because there could be complications with having bots take over in a competitive game, so I don't know. True. Yeah, it's true. Very true. Were you yawning? No, I am were you? dying. But I wasn't <laughs> yawning. <laughs> VG will send out dev squads to individual homes when players drop. Oof. Naked. Oof, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Boof. Hey, Rob. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. I'm back. Hey. Just talking about booties and titties and boof sending out death squads. Oh, that's way funner than what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say boof sending out death squads? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boof. Sorry, that was a delayed response. That was. <laughs> <laughs> boof is sending out death squads to. The players that drop out of the game. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for the 11 bits, Percival. Okay. Omega yeah. would say that's very responsible. Good job. <laughs> oh, 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 that's not what we want. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> Whoa, what's that? Uh, so I'm I'm adding a ribbon trail to the. It's like a type of particle. Oh. So I'm adding a ribbon trail. Uh, <laughs> may maybe maybe I need to to like. <laughs> yeah. To not touch VFX again. Yes. <laughs> shh, shh, it's fine. It's fine. 
<laughs> Everything's fine. Calm down, guys. Everything's okay. <laughs> I mean, we only need one to spawn, don't we? One. Give me one. No? Is that not, is that not right? Maybe it's right. I don't know. Find out. I'm not a VFX artist. I'm just making stuff up. Okay, one doesn't give us oh, anything. Boof. Save some for me, Boof! Boof's getting ready to have a barbecue. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. Ooh, nice. And he threw an open invite. Yeah. Lifetime. Lifetime should be like infinite rather than. Okay. Yeah, lifetime is just how long. Lifetime is just based on the timer, isn't it? I believe so, yeah. Put an alpha color over time and let the trail particle fade in fast and fade out slow. Sounds like someone's a VFX yes. artist. You want a job? Over life, not over time. Booth wants to know is there a way to make the crystals tumble as they move through the air? Um, I mean, yeah. Just let me, let me do one thing at a time. <laughs> I said, yeah, I want a job, but only after you fucking help me with my project, bruh. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> I'm trying to help with my own project right now, man. <laughs> he said it in caps, too. Like, fucking help me with my project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like <laughs> fuck caps. you, man. <laughs> Would it be possible to turn off this aether effect in game? It looks cool, although it might be visually cluttered with other stuff happening at the same time. This is not the final effect. No, 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 not by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> Almighty's just playing around. Almighty's just learning. <laughs> All he's doing right now, That's just fun. learning. So, we need. Oh, it's kind of doing the the fade out trail thing. Neat. It is neat. So let's fix the material up. How my boyfriend follow you today? Um... Followed me? Yeah. Why would you do that? That sounds like a that <laughs> sounds like a real rookie mistake. Got to be honest. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell him to unfollow. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Probably for the best, right?
Oh, well, I fucked that up. What's he, what's he saying? Who's racist? <laughs> why, why is he being so racist? Um, I wonder if we have a texture He's for this in my friend. material. Part. He's playing with a friend and the friend's character is black. So he called him Jamal. <sighs> <sighs> what's with the heavy sigh? He is super racist. <laughs> Well, he did say it's only racist if he feels like it. There we go. They're a little bit less like in your face, these trails. Definitely need to update a little bit better though because they're really like jaggy. Really jaggedy. Oh, to add a tumble or a spin, you have to just add torque and remove rotational yeah. damping to the or RV the on for that rotation like, stuff. What was that? Um, add torque and remove rotational damping to the RB on spawn. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's first. Fucking fucking also disable shadows for these things. They'll look bad, I think. Yeah, I've got to vanish. I'm gonna fall asleep. I right, catch that, man. I catch that. Be well. Good night. Booth said, "Mad respect for picking up this VFF stuff. Lots of hats on that head. Hashtag beast mode." <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag beast but, but it looks so bad. <laughs> Does look pretty bad. Better than anything I can do. I wonder if we can add some sparkles as well. They're gonna end up being fireworks. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your problem? Just in time for independence. Why, why, don't, why, don't, why don't you like? Why don't you like? What's the problem with like sparkles and fireworks, May? Nothing. Love sparkles and fireworks. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Independence Day here is in two days. Fireworks. Independence from what? Oh, <laughs> the <Almighty>. British. <laughs> <laughs> from Almighty. You guys need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out a notch. I just got home. My, two, my, my new old tablet just arrived. Your new Already. Old? My new old tablet, yeah, my drawing tablet broke. I just got home and I ordered a new one and it came like four days early. Oh, neat. Just mm. sweet. Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah. It's awesome. It's 
awesome when things come early. Which never happens. Ever. <laughs> this time. Hey, why is that broke? What is that? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about titties. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna complain. I love titties. <laughs> I want to know why they're all grey. That doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Mic is super low. Can barely hear you. Oh. Oh, there we go. Much better. You wanna blow up? I can help you explode. Linus? Huh? What are you talking about? What are we talking about? Oh no, it wasn't having a real boring stream, so I had to come in and shake things up. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> just kidding, I just... What's going on? No, that's you fair, man. You sound really low yeah. again. What the heck? And I have your volume at max. What about now? I'm really oh, confused. that's much better. I've just done the wrong thing. Sure. You broke it, Lee. It. I'm broke. Broke. Broked it. Are these uh, custom materials that you've made? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're they're not particularly good ones right now, but they will be. They'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the hell! I know there's an asset called M underscore eight. No up. It's fine. It's fine. I'll deal with this shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Aether. I expect the VFX to look somewhat darker, like dark cosmo cosmos particles. Um, what's your reference for that? Because Aether is literally yeah. just energy. <laughs> I say, nobody knows what Aether is. Hi, sort of dead warrior. Nice for you to be able to join too. For all you know, Aether is just what they call candy. <laughs> Have some candy. Have some candy. <laughs> Remember the face you put on the sword pommel in an earlier stream? Use it as a particle texture. We should just hide it under the map. So if anybody ever clips through, they just see a giant. Oz face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there is, there is in in the in the map, there is like a giant plane underneath the map, which basically has mm -hmm. the like the design of the map drawn on it, kind of thing, uh, like as a texture, so that like when the map is being built, you can just like hide it and have a look at the reference, kind of thing. Um, that's kind of cool. Kind of neat. I didn't even notice that. I fell through the map and never saw it. Is it like hidden on build? I'm just trying to figure out where these other things are right now. Where are they? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Just... 
Just do that. Right, so they're there. That's where they are. Okay, cool. So that's that's where you are. That's fine. We could also use the os face as our 404 texture, or whatever they call it. <laughs> Okay, so now they're circles, and that's fine. We like that. Circles is fine. Turned it into bubbles. Bubbles? Osville's face is the true logo for this game. Okay, go, initial size, like fucking... Is Theo done, by the way? Huh? Uh, Is Theo done? Nope. Hmm. Nope. Not yet. There's something going wrong with particle oh, color. I don't know what. Almighty, I tried signing up for a Z oh, there we go. but I accidentally typed one number wrong for my email and now I can't change it. Accidentally? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Sucks. He tried Just signing sign up, up with your real email? <laughs> he signed <laughs> up with a, for a ZBrush trial, but he accidentally typed in the wrong email and he can't change it. That sounds like a real it's rookie mistake, man. Like super, super rookie mistake. Uh, just use, I don't know, make a new email address, use that. <laughs> or just use your real email address, because... Yeah, all that. Yeah, your real one's not taken. <laughs> Hopefully the Aether will be somewhat sparkly now. Super sparkly, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Um, in Shimbi's video, she has kind of like those similar looking things around her. But that looks really cool, man. Are they just... that's not physics, is it? The tumbling? Um, so uh, when they initially spawn and they hit the floor, that is physics. So basically what happens is, um, they are, they, they are spawned by a spawner, which is what we would like attach to a minion or a player or whatever. Um, and when they spawn, they kind of like they they shoot out in 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 all directions and they bounce around like on the floor. Um, so that's actual. Then, simulation. Yeah, that's that's actual physics simulation because you know we can't guarantee where they're going to be in the world and you're probably gonna you know there'll be like bumps or they might be on a hill or whatever, you know, and it would look weird if they just kind of like stopped like in, it like and just stayed where they were, and then after a couple of seconds of that physics is disabled and they rush towards the player and then once they reach the player well once they get within 50 units of the player they uh they enter their self-destruct phase which is where they will um like grant the player any like like currency or experience that they're supposed to like that kind of thing yeah they're kind of shooting right through her it's pretty painful uh yeah that's the that, <laughs> that, that that's that's the ribbon particle but yes i i agree um so what to do about that because like like I said, like I'm not, oh, a, yeah. I'm not like a, I'm not like a particle guy, right? Like I don't, <laughs> I'm just like figuring it out as I go. Uh, it's weird. It's only the ribbon that goes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want an almighty beard cosmetic item you can buy and put on your hero. <laughs> <laughs> I I will oh, I will actually go and do like a f like photogrammetry of my beard. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Mathrox, I'm sorry, man. Like, email ZBrush support. <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to suggest. Just, just make a new account. Yeah, all that. Oh, okay. So is the uh, Theo model not ready for the website then? Um, it will be soon actually. Um, I'm, I'm basically I'm getting to the stage where I can I can start texturing pretty soon. How long have you been developing games? Me, um, I've been a character artist for like ten years. Uh, I've been a technical artist for like three. So a lot of this stuff is kind of new to me, and the technical art stuff that I know is more the programming side of things. So particles is absolutely something that I've never done before. I'm just figuring it out as I go along. Because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, that ribbon looks bad. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm going to get rid of the ribbon. Let's, let's delete the ribbon. Bye, ribbon. Uh... It seems like it's a fixed length of each thing, and that's why it goes through it. Yeah, I have no idea how to how to sort that. So let's just go with the sparkles. Let's just have sparkly ether. Ether. That looks better. Ether. Just having it sparkly is enough, I think. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I'm wondering how that's going to look on various uh, colored backgrounds. That looks better. Um, let um, me... Did you go to school for this? Nope. Or figure well, it out I did, I did. I did do a master's degree last year, but it was literally like... I didn't learn anything on it. Nothing to do with this anyway. The stuff that I learned on that master's degree was like how to write an essay properly. Uh, <laughs> that was basically it. <laughs> I mean, you do do that. How do Google group. properly? Not gonna lie, Googling is like half of my job. Oh yeah. Google rocks, man. Yeah. He told us, I think, something along the lines of like one of his, one of his first classes was how to Google properly. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, so, so in, so the, the... The year is split up, on the master's degree anyway, it's split up into three semesters. Um, and semester A, you had three modules. You had research and inquiry, uh, media discourses, and like practical artwork. And the practical artwork is was basically, they, they would go, okay, so the theme for this week is this. And it was like, red chases blue. Or like the next week it would be, um uh well it's just all kind of like abstract shit like that um a place in the mind was one of them um and and basically like you would have a week to to basically rough out something that fit the theme and it didn't even have to fit the theme from a from the point of view of being like um extremely literal like you could you could try and be you could be as abstract about the theme as the theme was itself um, so, for example, like, A Place in the Mind, I did, like, a female head and, like, she was crying in the rain, but you couldn't really see the tear because of the rain. Um, and so it was kind of, like, to, to provoke people to think about whether, you know, like, is she actually crying? Is there something wrong? Um, you know, uh, and, and it, I think, I think I did it at the time to do something about, like, mental health issues or something. Some kind of bullshit. Um, but it was, like... They didn't really. They didn't really teach you anything. It was like they'd just give you these tasks that you had to do, and then you had to go and like, like, learn how to do things for yourself rather than, you know, rely on actual lessons. Um, media discourses. That's where we learn a lot of things about like, why we make art, how we, uh, how art affects the world around us. Um, you know. E even going so far as to be fucking philosophical, like, what is life? <laughs> you know, like, uh, all, all that kind of shit. Um, 
So yeah, there, there was there was lots of that kind of stuff in media discourses. Research and inquiry was real full on bullshit. <laughs> it was literally like there was a lesson where they were like, so this is how you use Google, and this is how you can effectively use Google to research the topics and and stuff like that. And uh, and they introduced us to Google Scholar. Well, they introduced everyone else to Google Scholar. I literally did not attend that lesson. I was just like sat in the fucking cafeteria drinking coffee. <laughs> Oh, just couldn't be bothered with it at all. Um, and in the end, like most of my, most of the work that I did, especially for research, research and inquiry, which is where you basically you had to present um, a breakdown of a paper uh, that someone else has published. So like it had to, it had to be a peer reviewed paper, and we had to we had to present a breakdown of it on like a technical research basis so like what is this paper about why is it relevant to what we're doing you know all that kind of stuff and uh, and what the, one of the things they said was we have to read everything that you put in this we have to read like we have to read your proposal we have to read the essay that's attached to it and we have to read the paper because we have to make sure that what you're writing is accurate right so they have to read the paper so i went I'm going to go and find the fucking driest, most technical bullshit article I can find <laughs> and do my paper on that. And it was, it was long. It was like a really, really long paper on um, how to properly handle, um, uh, how to properly handle transparency without any form of um, sorting. So like... I was it was just super dry and so and I literally I just did it out of spite because I was just like this module is bullshit I don't see why I should have to do this shit like it's a fucking art course man let me just do artwork <laughs> and uh, and they're like yeah but you have to do this otherwise you'll fail and I was like well I'm gonna make it suck for you too then <laughs> so yeah no I I didn't go to school to learn any of this <laughs> in a lot of computer jobs you can just learn on your own. Obviously, school is still useful, but... I'd rather have no degree and be able to figure stuff out on my own than have a degree and... I think not it, be able to figure anything out. No, I, I, I do agree with you, but I think a big part of that is, like, the type of degree. Um, for example, like a bachelor's degree teaches you how to figure stuff out on your own, right? Like it, it teaches you to get to the stage where you're fairly autonomous. Um, a master's degree, like I have no idea what a master's degree is supposed to teach you. I really don't. It's supposed to just teach you a specific part of it, right? Specific. I guess. I guess it's supposed to be like a precursor to putting you on like a doctorate track or something. Yeah, like so. Yeah, I'm kind of like, it's not it's not the best artwork in the world. It's like a couple of hours of just like making some little bullshit things, but yeah, it looks looks okay. I think we can uh, we can improve upon this over time. But next stream, I'm definitely getting back to Theo. Um, so I'm gonna push this stuff to uh, I'm gonna push this stuff to per uh, to uh, not to perforce to uh, plastic so that the programmers can like implement it or whatever. Um, and we will, yeah, next stream we're going to get back to Theo. So, unless anybody's got any questions, I'll give you like a couple of minutes to, to ask your like final questions. Um, I'm going to like end the stream because I have nothing really else to do this evening. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> so is that a rock that you made? Uh, yeah, I just, I really quickly, at the beginning of the stream, I made like a, um, I made three different rocks. So what happens really is nice. what happens is in the um, in the Aether blueprint when it uh, when it spawns uh, it actually like it randomly selects one of the three rocks to be the Aether that spawns so it won't look exactly the same every time although most people probably won't notice but oh no it's there <laughs> well, for the whole uh, spawn does it spawn all the same one or just no, no, no. For, for for each one that is spawned, uh, it gets randomly shuffled. Oh. These rocks are your babies. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Shut up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Rock babies. When I say I have nothing else to do this evening, Gladia, I mean I have nothing else to do on the stream. I still have stuff to do. <laughs> nothing else. I'm just gonna kick back and relax. I have some Warhammer stuff to paint. Got given that for Father's oh, Day man. and I still haven't touched it. I said, well actually I have touched it. I, I've, 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 I've built him and I uh, I did like the, the sand and rocks and stuff on the base today. Now I need to spray paint him and get painting. Um, yeah. What, you base them before you paint them? Um, when it comes to like, yeah, if it's like sand and, and rocks and stuff like that, yes, definitely. Um, how will loading into a match made game work? Will there be hero boarded splashes or names or a things that is not finalized yet? Um, I think we've we've been playing around with this, haven't we? Like the the idea of having um, like the the idea of having like a a, a a kind of like a splash screen that's made up of the the team selection. I haven't seen anything about that. I thought that was one of the earlier things that we did was like, what are we going to do when it's loading? I might be wrong though. But that shouldn't be difficult. Yeah, I would assume it would either be from like League or just like a generic load screen with tips. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't really be too difficult to do though, right? Like. It's more the character art. So we want to do 3D renders. Well, yeah. I mean, like you just do you just do a render of each character, and then on the splash screen, we can just have like basically sprites or whatever that that just like load in the the characters that have been picked onto different positions on the screen. Shouldn't be too difficult. Either that, that or like, really... or the other way that you could do it, and this could be kind of interesting, is back in back in the early days of Paragon. When you picked, like, when the team was picking its characters, you'd be able to see all five characters, like, in 3D in the background, right? And that was super cool. So what happened? So what if the team picks all the heroes, and then um, as it starts to load the map, you take, you basically take a render of all of those heroes, like, from the camera's point of view, and then that image just stays there for like whilst the thing is loading. That could be another way of doing it. There's a couple of ways to do that kind of thing, but I'm abs personally I'm in favor of not just having like a, a boring loading screen. Like it would be interesting if we could have it some way linked to what you've just picked or whatever. That could be kind of cool. Well, I remember some of the Dota Warcraft three Dota loading screens were like, you know, a team of five on the left, team of five on the right, you know, running at each other. You could dynamically create that with, you know, renders of the ten heroes. Yeah. That would be sweet. That would be really sweet, actually. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, like a randomized cool. background and yeah, fucking, shader on top. Fucking totes, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Hang on. No, 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 no. Oh, dude. Hang on. What if we mix the two things? So, so the the way the, the old Paragon thing used to work... Um, how? Oh, I need to find a, an image of this. Give me a second. Uh, Paragon XSPP. Need to I need to find. Uh, oh, it'd be not team select, it'd be lobby, wouldn't it? Bob. Right, here we go. So if I if I put this address into chat. So, oh fuck me with that long link lol, I just destroyed chat. <laughs> how do I how do I delete my own comment in chat? What what chat? Uh, in uh, in thingy chat. In, in in uh stream chat. <laughs> I don't even see it. Yeah, we don't see it. Oh, that's probably for the best then. Maybe maybe it filtered it out because it was broke. Um That's what I was thinking. Okay. Do you see the link? Here we go. Is it a loud link? Can you see this link? Yes. Okay, right, cool. So this link um is what uh the the lobby used to look like in Legacy, right? Um, and it was... <laughs> Hold the, on, what is 
that skin? I'm sorry? <laughs> oh, right, so there was a bug in Legacy where you could pick the hero that you wanted... <laughs> you, you would pick the hero that you wanted to play, right? And then after you pick the hero that you wanted to play, you would uh, you would select a different hero, and that hero's material would be applied to your hero. Um, oh and that that I've was never seen this. dude. It was super fun because Kalari and a whole bunch of other heroes would literally go invisible if you used Severog's material. But would it show up to the enemies? Yeah. What? Yeah, dude, it was hilarious. <laughs> it must have been before I quit. What the heck? Dude, it was it was hilarious. So anyway, this was the old um the old lobby screen and it was literally like your character would be in the middle and it would be the same for everyone like whoever you were your character would be in the middle and then the other people like they would they would pick their heroes and they would appear in the backgrounds like to the sides. And it looks really cool, right? And so like my initial idea from a from a couple of minutes ago was we could do something like this. And then, just before just before we initialize the loading of the map, we take we basically take a render of this, right? We take a render of the heroes in this position, and then that is the loading screen, right? That could be really cool, but but what if we do it the way that you were thinking of, and your team appears as 3D models on the left-hand side? And their team appears as 3D models on the right-hand side. So it would be like, your hero is the closest one that you could see. And then, like, going up the left-hand side of the screen is the other heroes that are on your team. And then on the right-hand side is the team is the, is the enemy's team. And they would all have these dynamic kind of, like, uh, fight poses kind Battle of thing. Pose. Yeah, th uh, almost like Mortal yes. Kombat. You know, when you pick, like, a, a hero, a, a character in Mortal Kombat, they, they have the, the, they're in their, like, fight poses. Uh, facing the opposite side of the screen, right? So, what if we can do something like that? They're in these fight poses uh, with like some some kind of like basic animation or whatever, and then just before we initialize the map loading sequence, we take a screenshot of that, and that's the loading screen, like overlaid onto some like sick background or something. Yeah, and you could have like a, you could have like five or six randomized backgrounds. Those would be amazing. yeah, man. I think this could be really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, we're doing it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're doing it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, but it's I, pretty easy to you can do like renders like that, right, on the fly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah super easy. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily be screenshotting what's on the lobby. You'd basically be creating a scene. Right well, I mean, like, the, the lobby itself is a scene, right? So, I mean, we can we can basically, like, we can have a whole bunch of objects in the lobby that are hidden during the, the <laughs> character selection and then just have them become visible when the when the character selection is done. And then we take a screenshot and it, and it becomes, basically, it becomes a static screenshot as a loading screen um, because you can't, like, you, because you're transitioning between scenes, you can't really have that scene open, right? Um, so yeah, I think that would be probably the, the, the way to do it. But yeah, there's definitely some good possibilities there. Really good possibilities. Thank you, Briefcase Cat. That's awesome. Um, yeah, really, really good, uh, really good question, man. Um, Estra, Estrada Perez, um, in casual play, are we going to be able to mirror pick when there's like 20 plus heroes? Personally, I don't have anything against that. Whether or not mechanics decide to let you do that or not is another issue entirely. So, yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to go now, because it's about the time we'd end the stream anyway. I hope everyone has had fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching me fuck around with uh, particles and stuff. Um, next stream, we're going to be going back to Theo and like basically like really making sure that we've got all the details ready. Uh, making sure everything's looking nice, ready for when we um, when we head to low poly and then texturing stages. So uh, yeah, great to see everyone, and I'll see you on what day is it today? Monday. I'll see you on Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Wait, is it Monday? I think it it's Monday. Is Monday. Yeah. Uh, Friday for me. Yeah. I'll I'll see you all on Thursday. Have a good evening. <laughs>